welcome back to my channel and firstly happy new year i'm hoping this video is going to be going up either on the first or the second of january if it's going up later i've failed great way to start the year so today i'm sure you've guessed from the thumbnail and the title of this video i wanted to share with you my what I'm calling book awards of 2021. So from a reading perspective, I actually had a pretty good year. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I am not someone that reads hundreds of books a year. Um, and although I still struggle with that a little bit, I feel as though I should be reading more. I am coming around to the fact that actually it should be about the enjoyment of the books rather than the quantity of the books that you're reading. And so from that point of view, I would say that I have had a really good year. So I read, according to Goodreads, I read 33 books in 2021. I'm sure loads of people are watching this thinking, where were you? Uh, how have you not read more books? Um, I am not someone who typically reads and binges a book in a day. I'm someone who kind of reads in short bursts, hence why I've only read 33. But for me, that was really good. So I set a Goodreads challenge of 28 books because last year I read 27 and I wanted to do better than that. So actually, I'm really pleased with that. I've got some notes here because I can never remember what I want to say. Um, I read 11,671 pages last year. And my average rating was 3.7, which thinking back over the books that I've read, that feels about right. Um, so although saying that, the books that I have read over the last month or so would have pushed that up because I had two five star reads, one of which I did a full book review on last week. Um, anyway, I will leave that linked in the description below. There was a real mix of genres this year. Um, it's really interesting looking back at how your reading has changed. 2020 was pretty much dominated by chiclet and that is pretty much how my reading has always been up until I think it was late last year or even sort of early this year. Then I started reading a lot more thrillers um, and I love them and I would say now that about a third of all my reading is thrillers and I'm reading one at the moment that is brilliant so I hope to have that review for you later in the month but today I want I can't believe it's taken me this long how far through are we <laughs> before I've even got into the video um today I wanted to do a book awards video um I have come up with 10 categories and I'm going to award those categories to some of the books that I have read this year and we are ending so please stay watching until the end we are ending on my best book of 2020 21, which actually might come as a little bit of a surprise bearing in mind my scoring but we'll talk about that in a second this is going to be quite a lengthy video so make sure you're comfy grab yourself a hot drink um, get cozy and let's get started so these firstly let me just say that these are books that I've read in 2021 they weren't necessarily released in 2021 I also have to say <laughs> We will get into it, I promise. I also have to say that of these 10 categories, there are two that aren't necessarily positive. Um, not every book can be for everyone. So obviously this is simply my opinion. This is how I found the books. Um, if one of your favorites happens to be in one of those two categories, I'm really sorry, uh, but <laughs> like I said, it's simply my opinion. The first category is most emotional read of 2021 and if you've been watching my channel for a while now I don't think this one will come as any surprise but I am going to be giving this award to Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. Now because I've read all of these books that we're talking about today unsurprisingly I don't have them here because I passed them on um, so I will make sure that I pop a picture of the cover in here. So Firefly Lane, I wouldn't only say is the most emotional book that I've read in 2021, it's probably the most emotional book I have ever read. It broke me. You all know that if you saw my full review video of that. Again, anything that I mention here in terms of videos that I've done, I will leave linked in the description below. Um, I felt totally immersed in this story, which then made me really care 
for the characters so then no spoilers but then what happened at the end broke me uh, I never cry at books but this one was yeah it really got to me also interestingly Firefly Lane was the longest book I read this year at 479 pages so Firefly Lane is awarded most emotional read of 2021 Next up we have Most Unique Read and this I am awarding to Anxious People by Frederick Backman. Now I have heard so many people on booktube talk about Frederick Backman's books. This was the first book and actually it's still the only book that I have read from this author but I loved it and it was so different obviously that's what that is why I have awarded it most unique read um I typically don't read a lot of books that have been translated so that was quite unique for me as well um and also it was just the story it's nothing like I've ever read before it had a real variety of characters in there I'm not going to explain um too much about the books that I'm talking about today because I'm sure a lot of them you would have heard a lot about already um but Anxious People really makes me want to read more Frederick Backman. Now I have to give a sort of mention to another book that almost won this award. They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera was another completely sort of unique read for me. It was very different. Um, that's actually about um, a world where on the morning that you are going to die you receive a text message from the death cast letting you know that you're about to live your last 24 hours um such an interesting concept it really got me thinking but i think that i preferred anxious people um and it was quite they were both quite different but purely for the fact that i enjoyed anxious people more it has won most unique read of 2021 for me now the next award is massive as you'll know i feel like i say this all the time but as you'll know if you've watched my channel for a while a lot of my reading is chick lit i mean it has become more varied over the last year but typically i would say my go-to genre is chick lit so the award for best romance chick lit however we want to uh, call it is no surprise <laughs> is on a night like this by lindsay kelk now i did a full review video of this um as my last video i gave it five stars i said that it had totally sort of renewed my passion for chiclet again which it totally has this was pure sort of escapism a real feel-good read very light-hearted um it gave me everything that I wanted at that particular time. It didn't require me to concentrate too much. I didn't have to kind of keep rereading, going back over things. Just a very enjoyable five star read. Again, I will leave that video linked in the description below. I couldn't go though without giving a mention to <laughs> Karen Swan's latest release, which is Midnight in the Snow. Um, I read that just after I read Lindsay Kelk's new book and that was also a five-star read brilliant brilliant book her books are always um a bit more gritty than your typical chick lit they're always set somewhere quite exotic um so this time this was set between um the snowboarding and the surfing world but majority of it was set in Zelamzi around snowboarding and again total escapism but but very different to Lindsay Kelk I would say Lindsay Kelk is that more sort of feel good fluffy know what you're going to get read whereas Karen Swan is a little bit more like I said there's a bit more depth there there's a bit more of a sort of chunky storyline for you to get your teeth into but both are auto by authors for me and those last books that I read from them totally cement the reason why Okay, so now we're moving on to one of the awards that isn't so positive. Now, not everything can be positive. There will be books that we've read throughout the year, I'm sure everyone watching this will feel the same, that just haven't sort of clicked with us. So the award for sort of most disappointing slash overhyped for me this year, this is gonna be controversial, goes to Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm sure there are people now watching this being like, what? Are you crazy? That is my favourite book of the year. And, and I am so sorry. Um, 
I definitely it's definitely not my worst book of the year by far and actually when I was thinking about this if I had read it before I read Evelyn Hugo I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more also if I hadn't have heard all of the hype around it on booktube bookstagram again I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more I do feel it's very well written I feel that when everyone says it feels like non-fiction it feels like it's real life I totally agree with that I do think that the format of the writing style didn't work very well for me so it's in interview format and I struggle to really get into a book unless it's just written in a very sort of standard beginning middle end way um, I do think it would make a brilliant tv series I am very keen to see the adaptation of the book which I believe is coming out this year okay another biggie now and we are moving on to best thriller now like I was saying this has become a genre that I've enjoyed more and more as the year progressed um, last year and now I'm talking 2020. It gets quite confusing as we're at the start of a new year, doesn't it? In 2020, I think I only read a couple of thrillers. But last year, so 2021, it was probably about a third of my reading. And I am loving it. I feel as though if I've got a thriller on the go, I will read a lot more than any other genre. I will kind of keep wanting to pick it up because I want to know what happens, who done it what's going on. I've read a lot of really good thrillers this year. So um, The Holiday by TM Logan, I really enjoyed. The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware, really enjoyed. Both of those were actually new authors to me and I will definitely read more of those, um, hopefully this year. The winner though is a book that I have read most recently, other than the one that I'm reading right now. Um, and that is Three Hours by Rosamund Lupton. I have heard a lot of people rave about this book and I get it it's not overhyped it totally deserves that sort of praise that it's been getting um so if you don't know it is set in a Somerset school in the middle of a blizzard and the children in the school have been held hostage what I really liked about this book was the sort of differing viewpoints that you get so you get the viewpoints of the parents of the children that are in the school you get the teachers you get the gunmen you get it all you get the police officers i really like that more rounded view that you get so i think if you're watching this and you haven't read three hours but you really love sort of thrillers and you're thinking oh my god is it overhyped i'm not sure that i'm gonna like it that's exactly what i thought but definitely pick it up and give it a read because it is brilliant so three hours by rosamund lupton wins best thriller for me in 2021 okay now moving on to most beautiful cover um now <laughs> i feel as though i mean as with all these awards this is very subjective um so obviously i have taken what i feel is the most beautiful for me um maybe it's not typically beautiful but i would say malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed evokes such a sort of happy feelings in me just by looking at that cover it's so beachy summery surfy i can smell the coconut of the sun cream i can feel the sun on my back i think i'm getting a bit carried away mainly because it's pouring with rain and it's gray outside and it's only about three o'clock in the afternoon but what i wouldn't give to be whisked away to that scene right now take me to malibu um anyway so yeah malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed for me definitely gets most beautiful cover of 2021 so moving on to best historical fiction now again this is another genre that i have been enjoying more over the past year i don't think it will come as any surprise that um the winner of this category for me is the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed again so this year i have read three of her books having never read anything from her before um and evelyn hugo for me is very hard to beat like i said about daisy jones and the six that didn't quite get to that point for me malibu rising the same i felt a bit let down by that book if i'm honest um but evelyn hugo had it all the ending i did not see coming i'm not going to say huge amounts about this book because i feel as though it's probably the most spoken about book on booktube so you probably know everything there is to know about it but i recommend it to everyone um i think my sister actually read it 
late last year she loved it anyone that i can talk to that doesn't know about it or hasn't read it i will suggest that they read it i'm a bit like a stuck record next is most surprising read and actually this goes to a book that i read right at the beginning of the year in 2021 and that is the midnight library by matt Haig. wow um this is a book that even now kind of sticks with me i didn't expect to love it as much as i did i also didn't expect to kind of be as moved by it as I was and for it to make me think as much as it did it was really really thought-provoking I can totally understand why on my Goodreads it is the most popular book of all the books that I've read this year it is brilliant it was I think it was the first book I read in 2021 and I gave it five stars and I was like wow where do we go from here okay so we're coming towards the end now so the ninth category is another one that isn't hugely positive um and that is sort of the worst book that i have read this year and again this was a book that i read very early on in 2021 it was also a book that i did a full review video of and the comments kind of suggest that a lot of you felt the same as i did so i don't feel quite so bad saying this books have very different appeal for different people so i am not saying don't go out and read this i'm just saying that bear this in mind maybe have a read around of different reviews of people that you trust and see what they think because leave the world behind by Ruman alam was not for me at all i mean luckily it was quite a short book i think so i did push on through i didn't dnf it but for me it wasn't particularly well written nothing really happens um, there was a lot of sort of unnecessary shocking language in there all in all it just wasn't a book for me now <laughs> I would say that maybe that wouldn't have been the worst book of the year for me if I'd read Sally Rooney's new book but I didn't um, that is really controversial to say isn't it um, I'm sure that that was many people's favorite book of the year so I'm sorry if that was the case leave the world behind by Ruman Alam just wasn't a book for me so this year I am awarding that book as my worst book of the year and finally the best book of 2021 can you guess what it is <laughs> okay this has to go to Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. So obviously also my most emotional read of the year is also my best book of the year. It made me feel so much. Um, now looking back at the review I did of that, I actually only gave it four and a half stars. It didn't get the extra half because I feel as though I don't read a book to feel upset. However, looking back on it, also thinking about how much it sticks in my mind, how much I kind of think about it, um, I think I'm going to have to upgrade it to five stars, uh, which would make sense, bearing in mind this is my favourite book of 2021. This still is the only Kristen Hanna book I have read. Um, I do have another two or three on my shelf, which I've shared with you many times, I'm sure, either in book hauls or sort of a TBR video. Um, and I do really want to get to those this year when I'm saying that I mean 2022. I really would like to read more of her books. I absolutely loved her writing style. I loved how she sort of made me feel really invested in the story, how much I cared for the characters. It's just a very clever way of writing. And actually it's just a way of writing that I really enjoyed. So I can't wait to get stuck into those. And that is my book awards for 2021. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd be really interested to know what your number one book of 2021 was. Let me know in the comments below because I'd love to have a chat to you about it. Anyway, I think I have waffled on for long enough. This is a very lengthy video. I've got to go and edit this now. Thank you so much for supporting my channel over the past year. I know I haven't been around as much as the year before, but um, all your likes, your comments, your views honestly mean so much. So thank you so much for that. And I hope that you'll stick around for the coming year where you, you never know, I might even finally film a vlog. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you back here with a new video next week, maybe the week after, very soon. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.